Hello there, this is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC, and I'm back with another video. SQL Server Data Compression was a feature that was added to SQL Server 2008, and it was Enterprise Edition only until SQL Server 2016 Service Pack 1. So I'm going to show you a useful set of queries that you can use to run on an existing index, or actually for all the indexes in a particular table, to find out how compressible your data is and how volatile it is, and to try to figure out whether or not it's gonna be a good idea to use data compression. Now that it's in standard edition, it's a lot more accessible than it used to be. The SQL Server data compression feature lets you compress individual row store indexes using either page compression or row compression. Page compression is a superset of row compression that gives you more effective compression in some scenarios. And the problem is you may not know how compressible your data is with page compression or row compression. So Microsoft provides a system store procedure called SP Estimate Data Compression Savings that you can run against an individual index. Now what I used to do years ago is I would run that one by one against different indexes that I thought might be good data compression candidates. And by a good candidate for data compression, your ideal scenario is a large table of relatively static data that is highly compressible. Now the worst case scenario for data compression is a small table that's very volatile. And the reason why Volatility is bad for compression is that every time the data changes, it has to be decompressed and then changed and then recompressed. And that creates extra CPU work. Now, if you're just doing inserts to a table, that's not as bad as doing updates or deletes from a table. And then the ideal situation is it's just read only. So it's a history table or a logging table that never ever changes or you're just doing inserts to it. That's usually a pretty good candidate for compression. But judging by that, you need to still see how compressible the data actually is. And instead of guessing, you need to measure how volatile it is. So that's what this set of queries is going to help you do. Instead of guessing, you'll have a pretty good idea of whether data compression makes sense for your workload and your data or not. Let's take a look at what this query is going to do for us. What we have right here is where we declare all the variables and three things you're going to have to pay attention to if you want to use this. This line right here is the name of the schema. So if you're using the default DBO schema, like a lot of databases do, you can leave this alone. But if you have a different named schema, you'll have to change that. The next line is the table name that you're interested in. So you need to change that to the table that you want to use. And that's pretty much it, the schema name and the table name. And then finally, you'll have to come down here and set it to either page, row or none. And that means what kind of data compression do you want to have it use? So if it's using none now and you set this to page, it's going to run the queries and tell you how compressible it's going to be if you were to use page data compression compared to what it's using now. So that's how this works. And we've got the first query here is going to just go in and find how many rows are in the table and what sort of data compression are used on the clustered index or if it's a heap table on the heap table itself. The next one in this set is going to show you how much memory in the buffer pool is being used by the indexes or the heap of that table right now in your SQL Server buffer pool. So you would run this against production is the point. We're not changing anything. We're just going to scan some data and figure out how compressible it is and how much space is being used currently in the buffer pool. Next part of this is going to create a cursor that loops through the, all the indexes in the table right here. And it's going to go through and run SP estimate data compression savings using the schema name and the table name and then the index ID from the cursor and then what compression you wanted to use against that table. And it's going to output the results for each index in your table. That's what this cursor does. The next query in this little set of queries is going to show you the current index read write stats 
for this table since SQL Server's been running. So again, this is something you want to run on your production server so you can get an idea of how volatile the indexes in that table are. If you're seeing lots and lots of write activity and not very much read activity, it's not going to be a good candidate for compression in most cases. The next query that's part of this is just SP Help Index that gives you some basic index information. It doesn't tell you about filtered indexes or included columns. And then finally, the last query in this little set is going to show us all the files in the current database and how large they are and how much space they have available. So that's what this query does. So let's go back up to the top and we'll just run the entire thing. And as my comment says, this might take a few seconds depending on how big the table is and how fast your machine is and what kind of storage you have. This is a decent sized table on my workstation and I have a very fast machine and very fast storage. So it came back in about six seconds. Going through the results here, this is the name of the table and here's how many rows are in it, about 151 million rows. And currently, the clustered index does not have any data compression on it. And that's a very common scenario. Many, many people don't use data compression, so all their indexes are not going to be compressed. The next set of results is showing the two indexes that we have on that table. And index ID is, number one, is the clustered index. And it's using roughly 18 gigabytes of space in the buffer pool. So that's a pretty decent amount for one index. And this is especially important if you're running SQL Server Standard Edition because you only get to use 128 gigabytes in the buffer pool per instance, plus a little more for column store indexes or in-memory OLTP. But for the main buffer pool, only 128 gigs. So if I was running Standard Edition on this index, or on this instance rather, a lot of it would be used by this one index, and that's pretty significant. So the next set of results is right here, and this is showing me that the size with the current compression setting is roughly 18 gigabytes, just like we see here. Okay, and then it would go down to about 4.5 gigabytes if we implemented page data compression. So that's almost a four and a half to one compression ratio. That's quite good. So that sounds very interesting to me. I might want to use page data compression on the clustered index. And then there's a non-clustered index right here. And here's the size with the current compression setting, about eight gigabytes roughly. And it would go down to 2.6. So that's not quite as good, but that's still pretty decent. I'm thinking, yeah, maybe I do want to put page data compression on these indexes. And the, the name of the table, history, online search history, that's another tip off that, hey, this might be a good candidate for data compression. And then we come down here to the next set of results, and this is going to show me the index activity against this entire table since SQL Server has been running. And of course, this is on my workstation, not on a production database server. But what I see right here is it's got 32 reads and zero writes. And if I saw something like that, but with bigger numbers for the reads, that's going to make me want to probably use data compression. And then we have the SP uh, index help down here, or help index. And this is showing me some information about what is in those indexes. Now, again, it's not going to show if it has any included columns. And then finally, this last set of results, I've got you know, my primary data file right there. And then I've got four other data files in a different file group, the main file group that I created. And then here's my transaction log file. And you can see how large they are and how much space is used and how much is available. And if you're trying to optimize your performance, depending on what kind of storage you have, it often makes sense to have an additional file group with additional data files that you could spread across your storage to get better total I.O. performance out of your system. And that's what I've done in my workstation. I've got things spread by design across different drives on my system. Looking at all this, I'm thinking that implementing page data compression would probably be a really good idea for this table. And I've done it, in fact, and it does work very, very well. And of course, what you do when you implement page data compression is you rebuild the index 
and just use the option data compression equals page. And that goes through and rebuilds the indexes and, and, and compresses it as it goes. And that's going to take some time depending on the size of the table and how fast your storage is and how fast your machine is. But then after that, you're not really doing any work unless the data changes. So if it's mainly static data, data compression can be a huge win for you. SQL Server Data Compression is a very useful feature that not enough people use, in my opinion. The link to download this query will be in the description for the video. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot. This is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC, and I want to thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Finally, if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe because that really helps the channel out. Thanks a lot.